Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Ferris Makes Emulators. Almost said demos there. Uh, this is episode 27, uh, called Bug Squashing Part 3, because I still want to investigate why that pesky, um, Space Squash game doesn't boot. Of course, this is not Space Squash, this is Bound High. An amazing game. Super fun on Virtual Boy. Recommend you grab this emulator and play it. It's awesome. Anyway, uh, last week uh, went kind of slow, just kind of getting back into the whole streaming thing um, and uh, getting back on this project and thinking about, like, why doesn't that game boot right now and kind of going over the problem again. Uh, as a quick refresher, basically the issue is that um, the game actually sits there and waits on an interrupt that can only trigger on certain conditions, and it doesn't seem like the ROM actually sets up those conditions properly for that interrupt to occur. Uh, so in the emulator, it just sits there and waits for the interrupt. Uh, and a couple other emulators, they actually have invalid startup state, like startup state of the um, video hardware that's actually wrong. Um, and that makes the game work, but I'm really not happy with that. So I want to figure out what's wrong. So I was initially thinking that we would kind of go through, um, uh, go through like the, the initialization code in the game and try and figure out, okay, what what is how is it actually setting this stuff up? Um, is is there something wrong with the emulation that causes it to set things up wrong or whatever? Like just trying to get kind of an overview. But I thought, seeing how much code there is in there, I think that if we can find a faster way to sort of debug the issue, um, that's worth kind of exploring. Another thing that happened simultaneously is, uh, geez, like five or six weeks ago, it must have been at this point, um, I got in the mail a Flash Boy Plus, which is a flash cartridge for the Virtual Boy. Uh, this is thanks to Richard, Hutch Richard Hutchinson for this. I believe I thanked him on some previous streams, but still really happy about this. Um, so what I kind of thought about was, let's actually try and make some hardware tests. Let's try and make some ROMs ourselves uh, that can sort of try and isolate uh, when this interrupt occurs. And maybe if some of the startup state um, is expecting that the hardware behaves a little bit differently than we understand, um, just, to, just to see if there's a short path to being able to, to fix this bug, then reverse engineering a lot of code is kind of kind of the deal here. And at the same time, I also wanted to try this out. Um, and start making use of it anyway, because it's an awesome thing and really should be using this more uh, for the development of the emulator anyway. So that's kind of what I'm thinking today. Um, in the previous week, I meant to sort of get a jump on setting up a development environment and those kind of things for um, for actually working with this. I didn't really get much of a chance to do that. I kind of prioritized sleeping a lot this last week instead of doing those kind of things, which in hindsight, I'm pretty happy about because I'm in a pretty good mood today, but uh, means We'll have to figure out a little bit of the stuff on the stream, and I think that's okay. Uh, it should be cool to go through some of that stuff, and I'll go over some of the software I've downloaded um, and everything. I did, by the way, try this uh, yesterday, and it does seem to work perfectly, which is really nice. So at least if we're able to produce some ROMs today, I'll be pretty happy. Even if we don't end up getting to the point where we're testing the correct issue, at least if we produce some ROMs running on the system that show some things and then come up with a way to test it, I think that's a decent enough goal for today. Okay, long intro. By the way, hi to those guys in the chat. Uh, Zokwar, Bowsbot, nice of you to uh, finally join. Tomko, um, Dark Second, Dynamic Memory Allocation, the slow kind of DMA. Uh, and Desu Used, how's it going, guys? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, so I haven't, I haven't played that game in VR, of course, but I've played it on the Virtual Boy, and it's actually really nice. Um, it looks like it would be, like, way too intense, but it's actually pretty cool. Dino Colin, yes, uh, the game does work on hardware. Actually, I had a bit of a scare because I, I put the ROM on the cart and it didn't seem to boot, but that's because I forgot to pad the ROM, which this cart actually needs um, in order to, to boot properly. So for a second, I thought, oh, it doesn't actually run on the hardware. I have a bad ROM, but that's not the case. <laughs> Unfortunately. So yes, I did, I did try that game. I tried a, a few others. Um, this game actually came flashed on the cart when I got it, so that's kind of cool. So yeah, the cart works, the game works. We just gotta figure out why. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so what I've done is I went ahead and downloaded uh, this thing called VBDE. Excuse me. So VBDE is basically a Virtual Boy uh, development environment. It's uh, let me pull up this page here. So this is a this is a from Planet VB. Uh, let me. Or Planet Virtual Boy. Let me go ahead and paste this link in the chat here. Uh, this was a news item from, geez, a uh, month and a half ago, 
almost two months ago now, actually. Yeah, it would have been two months ago. Uh, basically, they released a new uh, version of this development environment and a new version of this uh, VU engine thing, which I believe is just a set of libraries in order to, to actually build games on the thing. Just some software libraries. Uh, but as far as I know, um, what this basically is, is it's kind of an all-in-one development environment for the Virtual Boy. So the idea is that you'd be able to download the regular version, which includes um, a portable version of Notepad++, or the Pro version, which is a lot larger, but includes a portable version of um, Idea. Uh, so the idea would be that you would, you would take this archive and just extract it, and then you click this little link here, and then you're moving. And that's sort of the idea. Uh, really cool. It appears to work. I've got it running here. Um, other than bumping up the font size and opening some files, I've done literally nothing with it except that I've gotten a couple of the projects, uh, these test projects that it comes with to build. I also looked uh, a bit at the startup source um, just because I was... In building test ROMs, I really want to know what's going on in the startup code because um, I think it's going to be really important to to make sure that our tests are kind of as isolated as possible when we make those. So I was really curious what goes on in here. It looks really good. Um, and that's literally as far as I got. Uh, so we'll be learning as we go here. And I think that'll be pretty cool. Uh, Daniel Collins says, do you have a serial port or such on the hardware that you can dump info on? Unfortunately, no. Um, at least as far as I know, this, this flash cart has a USB port that I think is only for flashing ROMs onto the cart, uh, not sending any data back from what I can tell. Uh, which is not ideal, but of course a lot better than nothing. So what I'm thinking uh, for like doing ROM tests like this is we we set up a test that will test some kind of condition, and then set up some some variables with the with the results, and then set up like the graphics library and just have it like you know print up to the screen. And I think think that'll be all right. Um, I've also been thinking about kind of like writing automated tests for this hardware. Um, that I would basically probably bootstrap the same way, but it'd be something like set up some really high level condition, like uh, run this ROM and after this many seconds, check that the value in this memory location is a value that we expect uh, to try and like describe as little as possible for each test. Um, because like, if you just like take, if you just say like, okay, run 10,000 cycles and take a system dump. Uh, the problem is that there are gonna be things that are subtly different between versions of the emulator that produce um, uh, like operationally correct results even though the states are slightly different so we don't want to we don't want to tie the tests to that low level states we just want to be able to describe as little as possible but I'm not really sure uh, I haven't thought about that as much as I'd like so I want to sort of keep letting that idea mull in my head as well but yeah I think that should, that could work Dana Colin can you poke the background color um, I should actually check that I believe you can uh, also can poke the audio register. So if we need to do like a completely clean test that only does minimal, uh, minimal, yeah, minimal whatever to the additional state of the system, uh, then those would be good candidates. Middle voice, how's it going? So yeah, that's basically where we're at. Um, so what, what I thought first is I want to just like build a couple things with this VBDE thing first, uh, just to kind of try that. Maybe make a little project that just does some basic, yeah, like you say, like poke the background color. So we can start with a project that just does that. And I want to get it to the point where we're, we have a loop where I can just run those on the flashcard. Because at that point, then we're iterating on, uh, let's actually try to set some useful stuff and run a useful test. But before that, I need to be able to actually build ROMs for this thing, at least somewhat comfortably, uh, without just looking up everything all the time. So going to have to start by learning that. Yeah, any, anything that we can change uh, in the hardware state that's minimal that we can observe is going to be useful for, for doing startup and timer tests. I mean, otherwise, we can always just like like store the results of those kind of tests in a variable and then set everything up later, and we could still get valid tests out of that. But it really depends, and it depends on what's in this uh, library uh, that this comes with as well, uh, because I really don't don't know what's in here yet. I haven't really looked at it, so. So we'll see. But the idea is that we'll be able to write everything in C, it looks like, which should be enough. Um, I'm not really expecting to do everything in assembler. Uh, I don't think we'll have to. I don't think it'll be that useful for us to. Um, because it looks like the startup code basically, like I don't even think it calls any, any other routines than just the code that's here. And it's basically 
Um, it does, uh, yeah, really basic, just sets a few global variables. It really doesn't seem to do much else, which is nice. Which is nice. Yeah, it calls into main. Not too bad. Yeah, Dana Colin, uh, sets up stack, clears BSS and such. Yeah, that's exactly, that's that's all it does. Like, um, I would have expected that plus maybe some setup routines for the libraries that it includes, but luckily it doesn't even seem to do that, <laughs> uh, which, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Uh, it also, it also um, sets up some bridges for the interrupt handlers uh, so that they will always preserve all the registers and do a couple other things. And while that's not, perfect because um in an ideal world we could also um set up our own interrupt handlers that would just over overwrite this which of course we would be able to do here as well just it would be a little bit um more work on the setting up the editor side i guess um like if we were doing timing tests with the interrupts it may be annoying but uh for our purposes this should be more than sufficient and of course there's rom title and stuff so that's pretty cool Nothing too surprising there, which is really the best thing we could hope for. But yeah, this VBDE thing looks pretty cool. Uh, there's buttons up here to do things like compile and run in Mendafin and also in Reality Boy. There's also a debug in Reality Boy option as well. It also looks like it has buttons for, um, yeah, direct flashing to the Flash Boy. A couple other things. Yeah, go to Planet VB. That's pretty funny. Um... Yeah, and then it goes over a bunch of like new features in the in the VUE and or VU engine, or I'm not really sure how to say that. Um, but they've got a little platformer demo, that kind of stuff. So what I want to do first is I want to just take one of these samples here um, and just go ahead and build it and get it running on on the actual hardware. I think that's a pretty good place to start. Um, so I'll just pick one of these. I think I ran the game of life one uh, initially to compile this. From what I can tell, you need to actually like open one of these files here. Um, and then compile it. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't mind doing that in this case. Uh, so it'll just compile that and run it in the, in the emulator, which is nice. So we're already up and running. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, let's try and flash this. So I'm just gonna, I don't have the best setup here for like plugging things into uh, USB right now. Actually, hold on, I think I can move stuff around. Normally when I do like SNES, I have, uh, I have everything hooked up all the time, and I, I'm not sure. There are some uh, flashcards where you're not supposed to leave them in the system while you're flashing them, um, and I don't know if this is one of those or not, so I'm just not going to risk it right now. Um, so I have to kind of plug that in and then flash it and then, yeah, uh, put it in the device and test it, uh, which is a bit slower than the normal setups I do. But as with anything, the first thing you do is you just kind of hack everything together, and then when it works, then you can sort of optimize the workflow. So we're going to start with that. Uh, so this should be built, so I should be able to flash this. Again, I don't know because I never used this, but we'll try. Uh, so Okay, so it looks like it brought up the normal flashing software uh, for this, um, for the Flash Boy in general, uh, which is not too bad. And then I should be able to take this padded one, and there's a little checkbox here, and I click flash. Um, I think I'm actually going to email um, the guy who makes these, um, Richard Hutchinson again, and probably ask if I can get the source of this because I would love to have this as a command line tool. Um, but for now, this is definitely good enough. Takes a minute. Can uh, put on Waterworld in the background because it has an awesome soundtrack. <laughs> what one of the so generally I kind of don't like these all in one development solutions um, because I don't like to like adapt to new editors for all the different products I do but I cannot argue 
that it is pretty cool to just be able to download and go, which has definitely been the case here. Like I literally downloaded this an hour ago <laughs> and, and we're already running, that's, that's pretty cool. So hats off to the people making this. Okay, so that's done, now we can disconnect. And then I'll just go ahead and test here. I have the Virtual Boy over here. Not in the best situation to film it, but not gonna really matter. The whole thing is just need to see if Game of Life actually runs on here. And it appears it does, however. It, it's moving around back and forth a lot, and I actually wonder if the, cause, cause there's, there's these tables that stabilize the scanners, um, and that's actually in the ROM, and I wonder if the tables here are not correct, because it looks really jumpy. But it does appear to work, so I'm just gonna try that with a couple other tests here. A um, couple other, other samples, just so we can make sure things are working more or less properly, so we know what to expect. And we'll build something ourselves. Dana Collins says maybe it hasn't been tested on the hardware. That's that's pretty likely, I think. We'll see. Uh, so I'm just gonna open something else. I'm guessing what it does when you click this compile option is it just takes the file that you have open currently and just like searches up the directory tree for for what looks like a project folder. I'm guessing that's what's happening here. Um, so just open a file. Cause I tried like just clicking on the folder and then running it didn't work. Uh, but when I opened the files, it seems to work. Uh, I wanted to do the, there's a platformer demo here. I wanted to try that. Uh, just open one of these game.c uh, then run this gotta love this water world music all the stuff. Yes, I am just running this out of my downloads folder. The other nice thing is that this seems to to work with uh, MSYS, which is cool. Yeah, it looks like it just built the view engine thing and now it's actually building the game. The unfortunate part about the Virtual Boy is I can't just like hook it up to my capture card and like stream the output. I wonder if it'd be possible for me to get like a a second webcam and just stick it in there. Cause that, that could actually be more convenient anyway if I just had the like viewports that showed those on my screen than having to look in the, in the thing. Maybe I'll look into that. Get two cheap webcams and then just stream those. <laughs> anything to make this development environment more streamlined. <laughs> as far as I know as well, the, the software that's behind this development environment is basically there's um, some patches that were done on top of GCC and Binutils that add Virtual Boy support, and the rest is just like Make and a couple other tools. Um, and then of course the libraries that they've done and some tooling along with that, but at least the the stuff that's moving the code around should be pretty pretty bare bones, and again, I like that as well. I don't, I don't want there to be much magic here. Okay. I also don't know what the key map is for this. I'm just gonna push all the buttons. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can't seem to find it. Well, I'll just run this on the hardware anyway. Dark second, this is slower than compiling Rust. Aha. Yeah, probably a single pendant. <laughs> but this is part of making emulators. <laughs> part of the process. There's, I have this, uh, this idea in the back of my mind to, uh, make an LLVM backend for VA10. And it's a project that I know I really should not work on, but it would be really cool to make a Virtual Boy demo in Rust. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. Of course, he doesn't have fearless concurrency. There, there has not been a better use for Kappa than that. Dark Seconds says, do it. Yeah, I don't know. Dear Colin says you can do GBA stuff in Rust, so yeah. Oh, it's tempting. <laughs> it's one of those projects that I want to do for the learning experience as well. Because like, I know I have the skills to do it. <laughs> And especially since like this stuff is built on top of bin utils that support this anyway, as far as I know, um, like the linker and stuff still comes from bin utils in that case. So I can I can just take a lot of those patches, and then it's about doing all the glue in uh, LLVM. But it's so orthogonal to all the other projects I want to work on. You can just. I, I hope it comes across in the stream how uncomfortable it is for for like my entire body to just lean so far into this every time I need to test something. actually pretty sick. <laughs> I'm gonna pull this up in Rustle Boy, this ROM here, because I want you guys to see this. This is actually a really, really cool demo. Um, let me pull that up. That was that was surprisingly cool. Actually I'll just run it from here. Oh, what? <laughs> it actually crashed. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to run that in Rustle Boy. <laughs> that I did not expect. <laughs> oh, I hadn't actually seen that blog post in a con. Cool. Moto Voids, Rust, Atari ST cross compiler. <laughs> yeah, no 68k support in LLVM. That'd be rad. LZE7, how long have you been programming? Long enough. <laughs> Dark Second, it, it crashed um, uh, with an unrecognized address. I can show you the message here. Um, I I don't really. Actually, I could do a quick... Let's just actually look at what that was. <laughs> it's like Jeff Russ needs a GCC backend. Yeah, maybe. Uh, 
Our kids witness the mother of all emulators. I call it the TSE Time Space Emulator. Yeah, we need safe states and rewind support on that one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to look up this address really quick. <laughs> See if we can fix an emulator bug <laughs> while trying to build test ROMs to test another emulator bug. Because we're that pro. <laughs> The trusty text scroll. So it read 2A, which is just past this. Okay, they don't have any behavior. And I guess, so my it, it probably goes and clears all these in some loop. Um, kind of weird that it goes over this range here. It would make sense if these were all being written as, as uh, words because the next one would have been after this. So I'm guessing, um, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing this is just some kind of clear loop or something's wrong, but what we should be able to do is go in the uh, interconnect and just fix this right up. Uh, in fact, it should just be here. If we just do this and this, just don't panic on, excuse me, don't panic on these unrecognized addresses just to see if it works. Did that correct here? Yeah. LZE, which programming language did you learn first? Uh, JavaScript, I think, back in the day. I wasn't very good at it, but. And I did this wrong. Oh, yeah, because this was read and then write. And I think I had that wrong. That would have been around 2000, 2001 when I was learning that. Dave Collins' first language was 68K assembler. I'm jealous. Yeah, so now it works. So it's probably just doing some clear loop. But this was a really cool demo. Much easier to navigate when another key map. The audio in this thing is a bit unfortunate. But that's generally the case with uh, Virtual Boy stuff. I want to see what the options are. Well, that's it. No worries. Yeah, this, this appeared to work just fine on the emulator. Whoops, that's probably a pause. The key map in Rush Boy is not optimal for this. Oh, that camera. <laughs> but th yeah, this was, a, this was a really cool little demo to have on here. Don't fall down the hole. So yeah, so that worked and it worked on the uh, on the hardware. Good news. The iron flame. Whoa, that camera's gonna make me sick. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I th I feel like that was smoother on the hardware. I'm actually gonna check. It's because the frame rate was definitely pretty low in this emulator. But I may just not have noticed. Let me try. I found an Easter egg. Cool. 
So it was actually better on the hardware with a little higher frame rate, but it was still pretty jarring. But I will show you that Easter egg I found. <laughs> yeah, I learned uh, I learned JavaScript initially, um, but not like very well. Like this was, I, w I was pretty young at the time. I learned JavaScript, um, did a little bit of C++ at the time, but was I really didn't understand it. Um, found Blitz Basic around then and did a lot of stuff there. That's when I discovered the demo scene and doing a lot of those kind of effects. Uh, from there, I moved to Free Basic because that was easier to pick up from C, but it was basically the same. It was like C with uh, with basic syntax, so that was really easy for me at the time to pick up. Uh, later, learned uh, C++ again. Um, did did a little bit of Java and and some C sharp somewhere in there as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Professionally, I've done C and C++, uh, a lot of C-sharp. Mostly graphics related. Unpause it, thanks for the follow. I totally got distracted and forgot to show the Easter egg I found. I think it was in here. Oh look, it's a platform. <laughs> yes, unpaused. If you were looking for Rust, you were in the right place. Except today, probably, because I think we're just going to be producing some test ROMs in uh, in C. But uh, but you know. <laughs> Oh, you can get there this way, too. <laughs> what a neat little demo. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Metal Voids makes C++ great again. <laughs> okay, so so the the way to fix this is to not have it crash on unrecognized addresses. Um, I wouldn't consider this a fix right now, so I'm just going to... Okay, we know how to make that work, so nothing really insightful to gain there. Just uh, that at some point, we'll probably want to make that panic... Um, only panic in debug builds. Uh, but for now, it's fine. <laughs> I want to actually do some more stuff in modern C++, but uh, don't really have many projects where that fits right now. The only projects that in my free time I'm working on that are C++ right now are, uh, well... My 64K synth is basically the only one that I'm actually working on actively these days. And that's basically just C with classes because it's got to be uh, 64K friendly. But yeah. Anyway, uh, so this appeared to work. Uh, I'm just going to do one more of these just to run on the hardware just to be... Or actually, I'll probably start looking at making our own ROM here pretty quick. I don't know what I want to put in it. I need to look at what these libraries give us, things we can do here. Um... For example, uh, there's this libgccvb thing, and there's this barebone uh, test project here. And I think I want to look at that. Um, yeah, I think I do want to do that. Uh, it doesn't look like the new thing does anything other than making like a new file here. I should just read the readme, actually. <laughs> I'm just going to pull that up. Okay, I'm actually going to turn down the font size a little bit here. So sorry, guys, on the stream, it might be a little harder to read. But, uh... Need to be able to read this myself. So yeah, VBD, no setup, you just go. Compile and running, and then you have uh, pre-configured emulator key mapping. Has some tools for image conversion, that's pretty cool. Go 
custom editors, bundle libraries. Default GCC VB library and advanced object oriented virtual boy game engine. Fancy. This looks like what we'll, what we'll want to use. I'm guessing this VU engine thing is uses this as well. This is just going to be like a standard library stuff. Simple projects you can use to test functionality or as reference for a boilerplate for your own project. You know, honestly, uh, for this stream, I might even just like not do this properly. Oh, this actually has MSIS as part of its own environment. That's funny. Um, yeah, what I was going to say is uh, I probably actually just won't set up a project properly for this just so we can get something running. I'll probably actually just take one of these bare bones um, samples and just sort of hack what we need in there. I don't really mind making a mess for this. I can just extract the the thing again. Um, yeah. Has some documentation in it. Yeah, cool. Uh, so yeah, so I think I'll think I'll do that instead of like trying to create a new project or something. We can just take uh this bare bone here project here. Uh, so if I just run this, I'm guessing we'll basically get nothing. Oh, we get uh we get this at least. Don't know if I like that we get this. We can we can hack that. Yeah. So init system precaution screen adjustment screen language selection screen then game loop, game loop. Uh, so if I just do this, let me uh, turn my font size back up here. If I just comment all this out, it should at least drop us into the game loop. There we go. Hello world. Composite Virtual Boy, very special. Oh, very special indeed. I was thinking today, because it's, it's been almost a year since I bought my Virtual Boy. And I'm very glad I did that. Because <laughs> uh, I've, I've had... If you look at the amount of hours I've spent with the thing, it has been a great investment. <laughs> and that's really the only positive way I can put it. <laughs> so... Couple things here. This functions and components thing. I don't know if I like how this is set up, but shouldn't really matter. Um, I'm guessing there's going to be init system is probably in the system H here. Yeah, here's init system. And what does this actually do? Set up a timer interrupt. Column table setup. Uh, that's probably actually. I'm guessing that's uh, the uh, scanner adjustment stuff, as far as I know. Why is that commented out? I wonder if that's why things were so shaky on the on the hardware. Um, yeah, then we don't. Okay, yeah, so there's actually a PNG for the adjustment screen, which, yeah, let's open that with text. Is there a way I can just open the, here we go. Oh, I got the notepad plus plus directory. <laughs> Her bones, assets. There's the adjustment screen. Oh, I guess it's the left and the right here. That's funny. And there's the font in here as well. Nice. Will be very nice not to have to do this. <laughs> uh, and then VB display on, and then it copies some memory. Yeah, the font tiles into this character segment here. Extra byte font tiles that probably comes from here. Yeah, here it is. Nice. So already what I'm liking about this, and generally what I like about um, code that's for a lot of these older systems is like it's all kind of laid out pretty flat there's not really going to be much magic between the code and what's actually going on on the system which is which is always makes me happy I like low level stuff even though I pretend not to sometimes 
Uh, I want to see what this game loop does. Okay, clears the screen. Rinse this. And then, yeah, okay, and then it just literally waits. So this is, uh, yeah, control never leaves this function. Um, VBFX fade in. That's kind of funny to have stuff for that. I wonder where these are coming from. I wonder where those kind of things are coming from. Print string and get string are here. I'm guessing stuff like this. Um, these are just wrappers around actually setting the 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 um, the registers directly. In fact, if we look at timer.h down here and the GCCVB, that's probably what we'll see. I I really want to understand like all the levels that are going on here, so just kind of dig in here. But yeah, okay, yeah, this actually makes a lot of sense because um, you'll either set or clear some bits, so it's kind of nice to be able to. Uh, abstract these and I like these abstractions as well because they're just so basic I don't uh, I don't want much more than this so far so far I've been pretty pleased with what I'm seeing here um, just because there really isn't much and I I really don't want there to be much I always get nervous that there's a lot of stuff in these kind of libraries but okay actually yeah so it looks like here it says up the column table Yeah, interesting. I'm actually going to test this on the hardware uh, or build this on the hardware again. And I want to see if commenting this back in actually stabilizes the frame. I wonder if that's why that was why that was janky. Because if they were just uninitialized values in the column table, that could make a lot of sense. So we'll start with this. Because that's, that's also the kind of stuff that if, if we do tests and we output to the screen, we want that stuff to be correct. Um, I, I think that's a good idea to try and like run some tests on the hardware, um, just like with like no environment setup, and then dump the results to the screen. Do the padded one. The this flash cart needs the ROM to be uh, padded. So like if you have a ROM that's smaller than the size of the memory on the flash cart, then you need to basically um, uh, re repeat the ROM and memory uh, all the way. So that the mapping is correct to basically simulate uh, less address lines. A bit funny that the that this doesn't do that automatically, but not too bad. Not too bad. Gotta say though, having this uh, this code in front of me now. Makes me want to do a Virtual Boy demo even more. Someday. I'm guessing all these functions with VB in front of them. I'm guessing that's a prefix for functions that are in this libgcc VB. Wonder why they call this set mem and not mem set. Copy mem and not mem copy. Wonder if it's just to not give the the illusion that it's the normal C runtime library. In which case, that's a decision that I don't disagree with. <laughs> How cool am I, guys? Okay, so I can tell you right now, this did not work. Uh, the scanning is just all over the place. And I would not be surprised if that was why. I don't even want to try and show that on, on the camera because that honestly just bugged my eyes out really <laughs> Like, really bad just looking at that. 
Uh. Yeah, I'm really gonna have to try and make a some kind of webcam setup. Dark Second, no, I didn't comment it in because I wanted to see if it was broken as is, and then to see if this in particular fixed it. So I wanted to be I wanted to be more scientific than commenting it in first. <laughs> um, so now I've seen it without, and then this will be with, and it should basically work. Armageddon's Witness, there are only four Virtual Boy demo scene productions on the point right now. Oh, I know. <laughs> I've looked. <laughs> Metal Void's 90s electronic. How nerdy. Oh, you're jealous. You're jealous of my, of my Virtual Boy and N64 and multiple Super Nintendos within arm's reach. <laughs> So one thing I do agree with with this like bare bones test project is that all this system in it stuff is in the in the project itself. It looks like there's not a lot of like system in it that's automatically done for you, and I'm really happy about that to be honest. Um, like I said before, I really don't want there to be a lot of magic here. I want to have as much control of the system as possible, and then I want this stuff in this library to basically just be basic abstractions over reading and writing registers directly. And it looks like that's the case, and I'm quite pleased about that that will make make our job easier I think so even even here like the library doesn't set up the font and everything and that's just part of this little test project here testing this again yeah, now it works perfectly. So that would totally make sense. That's exactly what I thought it was. I still, I don't know why this was commented out by default. Not a problem though, because now it's fixed. I kind of want to try that uh, Game of Life thing, but for the sake of time, I won't. Um, okay, yeah, so then for clearing the screen. Okay, yeah, so it literally just clears the characters. Um, character segment zero and then this BG map. So we just get all blank. That makes a lot of sense. Axis 27, how's it going? So I'm still not really sure what it's doing with the timer here. Don't really know what's going on there. And I would like to see what's going on with like video interrupts and stuff. It'd be nice to do any kind of updates we're doing in there rather than in any sort of timer interrupts. Actress 27, thanks for the follow. So mock 83 completely missed the tweets announcing the start. Yeah, sorry about that. I've been I've been tweeting a lot less, um, just announcing things on my Twitter a lot less. Um, not because I'm doing less, but just because it's uh, like, since we're on a set schedule now, um, just kind of trying to reduce the notifications a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, if we look at if we look at main, so the thing is we had this uh, CRT zero here from the library itself, uh, and I I just want to yeah go through all the startup code again. It really yeah it does this VRAM wait loop, so it just has a big loop where it just waits for the the did I say VRAM and WRAM um, to be set up. It does some dummy SRAM reads. I don't know why it does that, uh, but it doesn't really look like it does anything else. Um, some data start here. All it does is just set these up uh, in this loop here. Uh, sets up BSS, and then I just, I just want to trace sort of the code path and get an understanding of of everything that's doing here. Um, cleared SRAM section uninitialized SRAM. Don't really know what that is either. Um, like why there would be a 
as from section i guess maybe there's just some uh yeah honestly i'm not sure but should be okay disable clear enable cache not a problem uh it shouldn't affect us because it's just an i cache anyway um set up stack pointer and some other things as well and then calls into main and that's all it does Uh, and then I want to look at the interim vectors here. Because from what I understand, there's this prologue here, an epilogue, and it reads from this key vector thing. I'm not sure what that is. Hey, evil. Because basically all the interrupt handlers here, they just jump into this handler prologue. So I wonder what this key vector thing is here. Arthur Carlson, usually I'm using Sublime. Uh, in this case, um, I'm using uh, Notepad++ as part of this integrated uh, virtual boy development environment setup. Uh, so it's kind of unusual for me to use something other than Sublime these days. But that's what this is. Oops. Okay, so just some pointer. But then I wonder Actually, I like the floating point stuff. It just doesn't catch. Kind of funny. I mean, you'd have to enable those exceptions anyway, as far as I remember. So it could make sense to just not have that stuff set up. But it looks like all these interrupts just get routed to the same handler. That's kind of weird. I think. I mean, I can always just change this, but still. That's not what I would have expected. I would have expected to at least have different handlers for these. Interesting. So let's go ahead and look at the setup code for this again. This goes in this init system thing, which was in here. Setup timer. So this, I'm guessing, still... Uh, timer vector here. Interesting. Is that something that this has defined? Uh, yeah. Let me let me post the link, Arthur. Um, I posted this this earlier. This is a VBDE. It's a integrated virtual boy development environment. Um, here's the news thing about it. It's kind of the easiest to. Get an overview, I think. But yeah, it's uh, Notepad++ with some stuff in a portable um, sort of installation. It's actually, have, yay, the joys of global variables. Oh yeah, we are in peak sort of uh, embedded C here. So we're going to see a lot of those. No worries. But basically what it's doing is it's setting a vector to call this timer handle function. So whenever the interrupt fires, we get this. Uh, that's what it's telling us here. Um, so we can interrupt enable stuff. And some kind of weird stuff going on here. Uh, but I'm just wondering where this comes from, this timer vector here. Is this here that we have this? This is nice to have some of these. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Dan Colin. I actually should use RipGrep for that. In fact, I'm going to. <laughs> hmm. 
Little Void's assembler is just too high level for me. Here we go again. <laughs> Ah, uh, here we go. I just found interrupts.h. It still sets up this key vector thing. I wonder where, is that in here that this is used? Okay, so yeah, so here, because here we have these global vectors. But again, these are locations in uh, in um, in RAM. These here. In fact, it looks like it just stuffs them at the top of RAM. So something has to dispatch from the actual interrupt handler. And it looks like this just uses uh, a single interrupt vector here that then will dispatch to the other ones. I just want to understand this, mecha this mechanism before I start relying on it. Actually, cargo install rip grep data colon. So I've just discovered. Could try finding files as well. See if this gives us anything. Oh, we need a directory. Elex says, 30 registers is great. Actually, it is great. <laughs> Classic risk. Also, it's super nice that this actually preserves all of them. If you uh, have seen on the Rustle Boy blog, I did a big post about a case where that did not work in Mario Tennis. Local hoster, how's it going? Back up to 40 viewers or something. Nice to have a full house again. Yeah, I gotta find this folder here. I really don't use Notepad++ and haven't for many years. So uh, please excuse how horribly slow I am with this. Oh, that was really dumb actually. I searched in the wrong folder. We don't want to search in the sample directory. We want to search in the library directory. Okay, so that appears to be it. It's only used here. It's really weird, I think. all these just jump to this <laughs> yeah that's a good point I can search for this without the underscore Uh, what? Okay. At least we have... Okay, no, that didn't actually really help, did it? <laughs> Extremely E32 key vector. 
and nothing seems to use this. That's so weird. Mad Moose, the second Eurovision semifinal is starting. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> hey, Giant Jelly Matt. How's your synth going? Well, I hope. Yeah, I'll write down that it's starting so I don't uh, forget later that it's starting now. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder. That's so weird. But all those appear to get mapped to the key vector and then that doesn't end up being... Like, where is that dispatch code? Something's got to use this. Oh, nice, change on that. That's the hard part. <laughs> or at least the boring part out of the way. I would, I would also recommend to check out uh, Blueberry's Metasynth. This is something that I've been meaning to play with a lot. It's, it's basically a Lua interpreter inside a VST plugin. Useful for just playing around with ideas before making them proper. <laughs> the Mach 83, yeah, not quite that VST. <laughs> uh, so I want, yeah, so I wanted to look at the dispatch here. So for example, if we look at the um, any one of these interrupts, it's just going to jump to this interrupt handler prologue, and then what is that? What happens there? So we hit the prologue. Um, we make some stack space to put all all these registers here. Uh, LP, I'm guessing they're using for, probably means link pointer, but that, I'm guessing that's R31. Um, and then what it does is it sets R1 here to the key vector or the, the value stored, or I guess high and low. These are probably macros that just pull the, uh, um, it, it must be the addresses for these. And I'm guessing it also knows that they're going to be used this way. So it will probably adjust the thing, but because these are, this actually does a, uh, an add of the sign extended value here. Um, so we get the value into R1, which this should just point to key vector. Um, so R1 is a, is the, the pointer. Uh, STSR um, will, it looks like it pulls the status register five and puts that into R6, does some stuff with it and then adds that to R1. Oh, okay. Okay. Actually, this is it. <laughs> uh, I think what it's doing is it's pulling the status register because um, if I remember correctly, there's a interrupt level. Um, so each interrupt is enumerated, has its own level. And then depending on the level um, in the interrupt vector, uh, it looks like it's dispatching based on, like it pulls those bits out for that level uh, and then adds that to R1 and then uses that to determine where it actually jumps. Or... I think that's what's happening here. How can I say dev? No, I haven't. I haven't heard of protoplug, but yeah, definitely, definitely sounds similar. I'll have to check that out as, that out as well. I'm gonna Google that really quick. 
and then leave the tab open for later. Uh, but yeah, so I'm guessing actually what's, what happens there is that, yeah, it looks, again, I haven't checked the bits here, but I'm guessing it's pulling out the interrupt level in order to determine which interrupt it'll use. Um, just R1 here, because if, if the key vector here uh, we're, yeah, first in, in the row here, then just stepping by four would give you the different, uh, values here. So I'm guessing that's what's going on here. And then it compares it to zero. Okay. That actually makes sense that it would do that indirectly because it's going to see if the handler is actually zero or not. Yeah, I should be able to debug it in the emulator, but I think, I think we're onto it there. So compare it gets the the handler address and then compares it to zero. Uh, if it is zero, then it's just going to jump straight to the epilogue where it's going to pull everything off the stack, adjust the stack again, and return. Otherwise, it's going to jump to the interrupt handler thing here. Yeah, which just jumps through R one. Hmm. Okay, no, this actually makes sense because it jumps and links here and then it just jumps. And so then when this returns, when the handler function returns, that uh, that actually also makes sense why it does that indirection because um, then we can just do the, the handlers for them as pointers to C functions because those will use ret uh, and then that'll return there. Uh, because we jump and linked here and then just jumped through this, then the link address would actually put us here when it uh, when it returns from the function. So then we're going going to restore the state and then return. Okay, so I think that actually makes sense. Um, and then the key here again is that these are all sequential um, here in memory. <laughs> so now that we understand how the <laughs> how the uh, dispatch here works, which is totally not necessary to understand for this, but I really wanted to. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Again, not that much magic. And we we like when there's not a lot of magic. Uh, I'm actually going to grab a drink of water, so I'm going to be right back. And a back already. By the way, random thought. Um, if any of you guys are anywhere near Norway during July, mid July, come to Solskogen. It's going to be awesome. I don't think they put up their website yet. <laughs> but I've been talking to some of the organizers today as they're my colleagues. And it's going to be awesome. Yes, Dana Colin will be there. The rest of y'all better be there too. <laughs> if if you can, of course. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh yeah. More peace of mind for me that there's no magic here. So if we go back to our system code here, this will set up the timer interrupt. Don't care about that. We do want it to set up the column table. Uh that was here. 
sets this up. We do want to set this up to make sure we actually have a stable display. Um, maybe display on. I want to see what that does. And then, yeah, just copies the font there. That's fine. So you can display on here. Yeah. So here, so XP is the drawing process and DP is the display process. Uh, so this basically enables the drawing process, enables the display process, um, sets frame cycle to zero, which is basically um, uh, means that we have these game frames uh, and then the display frames and there's one game frame, every display frame is what this means. Uh, it looks like this, not sure, can't remember what that does. I think it clears all the interrupt bits um, that are set in the value you put here. So we takes all the interrupt pending ones and then sets that to interrupt clear, which would make sense, but that just cleared all the interrupts. Um, yeah. And then I think it waits here. If I'm guessing this is display status, and if I know these bits correctly, it's sitting here waiting for the display to be ready, which it shouldn't need to do. Um, so the answer to this is no, I think. And then it sets up all the brightness registers. which makes sense. And background color is our background color. In fact, in fact let's, uh, let's mess with this a bit. Metal voids, I will also be evoked this here. That's the plan at least. Dynamic memory allocation, I would suggest you give it a shot. Although I don't know if you have before or anything. <laughs> it's just really fun. Uh, what I want to do is I want to go to here. Is this, yeah, it sets up the system here. And in, let's just go to main. Screw this. Let's just see what happens if we do this. And we get a big old heap of nothing. <laughs> uh, local hoster, uh, yeah, so there's a game that, that won't start correctly, and I wanted to make some test ROMs to see if we could figure out uh, why it doesn't start correctly. Uh, in particular, it seems to not set up hardware state how I would have expected it to. Um, and then waits for an interrupt that shouldn't fire, but seems to. So I kind of want to replicate that state. But for now, I need to play around with um, actually making test ROMs. So we're going to start there. Direct memory allocation. That's cool that you learned uh, from this stuff from the streams. I always want to share that stuff. Metal Voids, uh, you'll do a VB demo for Evoke, right? I'm counting on you. No. <laughs> I was going to say no right now. Uh, if I do a Virtual Boy demo, it'll be sometime in the future in the far future. <laughs> but I do I do want to have something for Evoke, um, whether it's a demo or something else. No worries, local hoster. Um, so yeah, I want to get this visible. What does uh, game loop do that we're not doing? Was that in system? I don't think it was. Game loop. VBX fade in, what does that do? Or VBFX fade in? It's in video. It's frames and then sets brightness. I'm pretty sure this would have taken care of that for us. So I think we're okay there. Mm. 
my gut feeling is that it won't need to wait for this stuff. But we could we could move that just to see. Let's uh let's, we'll do this. It's funny, even after writing the emulator. <laughs> haven't done this stuff before, so. Okay, so interestingly enough, this is what I expected. <laughs> so there is something here that it had to do. So what what can we get rid of and still have this work? That's what I want to know. Can we get rid of all this and still have it work? Nope. Okay, good. That's consistent with having it uh, outside of this function. Do we need this? <laughs> Okay, that didn't help. Is it this? If it's the fade registers, that's the easiest thing to fix. And kind of the thing I expect most. Um, guessing it'll be, guessing it'll be this. You can learn the hotkeys for this. Little editor setup, bang. Okay, so it's uh, it's this VBFX fade in. Do I need that though? I mean, really, what it does is it goes to thirty-two, and then sets the brightness, I I by two and I. So I guess these are the different uh, yeah values it sets in the different registers. Less than or equal to 32 as well. So let's just try doing this. I don't want to wait for the frame unless we have to. So let's just try hard coding some value here. Uh, so we'll go up to here. Instead of doing this, we're going to do this. Let's see what happens. Bang. Got it. Memus DK, how does that behave on hardware? That is why we're doing this, because I don't know yet. <laughs> but I, I want to have just the simplest test case possible, and then we'll find out. So now that we have this, let's test. And this should give us bright red on both screens. Unless it went horribly wrong. But we'll see. Yeah, I should really fix up... Because I have, I have a couple spare Virtual Boy units. I should really fix up one of them. Because the my main unit, I want to keep kind of nice. I don't want to, like, tape anything to it. <laughs> and I'm thinking about that because I should really take, like get a couple cheap webcams and just put one on each eye and just like tape them there or something. And then just have that, like it doesn't have to be on the stand. It's just have it sitting somewhere and then just view the output of those uh, webcams on my screen. Should use one of the spare units like that. Also the shop where I got it just got, a bunch of them in as well. I could just buy another one. <laughs> but they're kind of pricey if you get them nice. Get them in good condition. The spare units is because I got them somewhat broken, but they should be fixable. I got them for a lot cheaper that way. But yeah, not setting this up would make sense because we're just changing the background color, really. Um, this is setting up uh, everything basically so that we always get, or so that it shows the um, uh, the actual world that this text is going to be rendered to. Uh, so that's why that would be necessary there. But here we should just be able to set the brightness registers, which I'm still a bit surprised that the initial values there didn't uh, give us what we wanted, but this should be good enough for now anyway. Uh, and then, yeah, just print out the uh, background color here. So actually, a good test then is going to be to try and like set up this interrupt um, for a case where I kind of expect it not to fire. 
or where it doesn't fire in the emulator. And then if it fires on the system, then we know that there's something different. And that's kind of what I want to try and reduce this to. Um, so we'll have to see if that works. <laughs> Mad Moves, then you can uh, run an automated continuous integration test suite by having a computer read the webcam watching the DB. The only issue, of course, is actually flashing the new ROMs to the cartridge. And uh, yeah, some other things that wouldn't be trivial, but yeah. <laughs> and we got bright red on the hardware, so that's a good sign. This is fun. I haven't, I haven't ri actually written virtual by code until today. Only tore it apart, so this is nice. Uh, so I want to I want to move this out here because because I want to. So this would be kind of our um, our success or failure state. Be the easiest. I mean, actually, though, <clears throat> or well, I guess this would be the simplest. But since we have printing stuff, we might as well might as well take advantage of that. Actually, when I think about it. I mean, this is nice that we've uh, kind of uh, sort of distilled it into just what we need, except it does do a couple extra stuff like copying the font, which we wouldn't need in this case. Um, everything else, though, is basically what we would expect. Uh, as far as I know, the VB display on also, I want to make sure that doesn't enable the interrupts that we want to enable. Um, I know it clears the interrupt pending stuff. But yeah, it doesn't look like it actually uh, enables any of the interrupts, which is really good. We don't want it to do that. However, however, I'm actually going to move this out into main too, because I want to see everything that happens here. Ehig's Twitch, uh, when did you begin the Virtual Boy emulator project? Uh, in December. So it actually has, it's actually not that old. Uh, Dark Second, the game doesn't turn on the screen. So yeah, so it, it expects an interrupt to fire. And as far as I understand, that interrupt's only supposed to fire when the screen is enabled. The The game never appears to enable it explicitly though. And that's, that's, the, that's the tricky bit here. So what I want to do, I want to bring all this into main so that we can see basically everything that this does. Um... So I, I like this here. <laughs> uh, and then I want to um, I want to look at this VB display on. I'm actually probably going to copy the code out of here as well. Just to get everything in main. Because I want to see everything that our little test case does. Other than that uh, initial um, setup code, which is basically trivial. And I'm going to leave the column table there as well. Because that just looked like a, looked like a basic copy. That I'm not too worried about. Yeah, because all it does is just move these into the column table. Not a problem. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I'm just going to erase this. Uh, yeah. Also, we're going to do this. And so I think I want to set up an interrupt that when it fires, it sets this. I think that's what I want to set up here. I think, yeah, everything else looks good. Oh yeah, it actually already sets this here. Not a problem. But it was here because from what I understand, This one is what it doesn't set. It doesn't set these up. So 
So if we want any of this to show, we also need to set this. So this will be our success condition here. We actually shouldn't need the drawing control anyway, although I th think I think we actually do need that because I'm fairly certain um, the background color is actually just a register that the drawing process uses to fill the frame buffers, if I remember correctly. Uh, so we will need to enable all of this. But I don't want to do any of this until we actually get that interrupt. And if that's the case, yeah, then this could make sense. Now, we're relying here just by not setting this stuff. We're, we're relying on the initial hardware state to be known, uh, which is that these are disabled. In fact, if I, if I do this, um, we should get a black screen on the hardware. Hey, Dom170. Arthur Carlson, uh, is there a way to do some on-device debugging on the Virtual Boy? Not that I know of. Um, if we had a flashcard that could support that, for example, that would be a good way to do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, at least I don't have the setup to do that. I don't know anyone that does, but, uh, would, would be possible to build one, but it would be a pretty sufficient amount of effort. Um, anyway, this, we wanted a black screen out of this, so that's fine. Uh, interestingly enough, I could actually probably enable the drawing status. And incorrectly, Mednafin should actually draw the come out with pink here. And I actually don't think this is correct that it does this. This is this is what's wrong. Uh, because this would assume that the display process is enabled on startup and it's not. So the interesting thing is, of course, by enabling this and not enabling this, we've able to been able to verify that at least that operates as expected in the emulator that we know is incorrect. Um, if I were to run this same ROM in Rustro Boy. The screen will still be black, actually. Um, I'm just going to pull that up really quick. Yep, black screen and rush, oh boy. And if we had enabled this, we should get white although we don't I wonder why that is wonder why that is just to try something else Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, I didn't uh, compile it. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I was about to go insane there. <laughs> so like this, is this just the compile thing? Uh, whoops. Oh, weird. It's just got argument list. It's too long. Something went weird here. the hell this got strange hope I didn't just find a bug here <laughs> what what is this I changed nothing related to this Hmm. Why did the colors change? <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know what happened here, but whatever. <laughs> Let's just try and make this happen again. Oh yeah, that's actually a good point. It's just to close a bunch of these. 
Ah, well. <laughs> Still saying argument list too long? What the hell? <laughs> That's so weird. I don't know what's going on here, you guys. So suddenly this just stopped working. That's fun. Hmm. <laughs> that moves Notepad++ plus plus is what's going on. This is why you get the pro version with IDEA. Not in PPP. Why though? Is there a way to clean? I just delete the build folder. Evil. Well, it's free. That it is. Not going to argue with that. Hmm, actually, it seems like there's some weird build folder nesting in the output stuff. Okay, this got super jank. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this outside of Explorer. <laughs> this got really weird. Okay, that took it out. <laughs> I'm just going to run this again as well. <laughs> Very strange. Let's try this again. And now we're rolling. So I don't know what happened there. But okay. Yeah, so in this case, we get purple here, and we should get um, black screen out of uh, Rush Toolboy, assuming that the startup state is what we expect. If I put this back in and then recompile this, uh, we should get um, purple again in Mendafin, and we should get uh, white in Rush Toolboy. And we do. So that's good. Uh, so what I wanted to test first is if we get a black screen with this on the hardware. Uh, which is which is what we expect. That's what we want to happen. So I'll just double check that happens with Rustle Boy. Looking good. Uh, and then we'll flash this to the actual hardware. Yeah, it seemed like it just in the build folder, it made a build slash release slash build slash release like on and on and on until that was just way too many and I couldn't even delete the folders from Explorer. But I could use RM from MSYS. So that's what got rid of the build folder and then it works again. So I don't know what happened there, but okay. Yes, uh, actually, I don't think the 256 char limit is in Explorer, but there is uh, there is some kind of character limit there. If it's fixed in creator's update, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> Keep getting the pop-ups to tell me about it, but I haven't upgraded. This is flashing, by the way. And I don't know why all the colors in the editor changed. I kind of liked that blue better. <laughs> but whatever. I don't mind just hacking this together today. 
the thing is, if we can create a simple enough test case that just isolates the problem without having to set up a whole like development environment, then that's actually a win. We've saved a lot of time that way. So I'm not going to worry about it until then. If, if the only quirk really is that we have to deal with Notepad++ and sometimes delete the build folder, <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> there needs to be Borland Blue. <laughs> yeah, okay. So on the hardware, it's black, and that's exactly what we expected. I'm happy about that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this. I want to set up these registers in uh, in one of the interrupts. I want to enable the interrupt for um, when the display is ready and put these in that interrupt. I think that's what I want to do. Uh, to see how that works, I'm probably just going to look at the or was it timer here? See how it set up this interrupt. I think all it did, yeah, it set up this timer handle here. Uh, we can just do this here. Uh, and do this. I think it was. Uh, I don't know what to look for for the handler here again, but I know it was listed here. Uh, the VPU vector, it looks like. The Mac UK Russell Boy one, my nap and zero. Yes, <laughs> it, in that side by side test, absolutely. But that's, yeah. To be fair, there still runs this game, but I think it I think it does so because of that hack. And I do I do want to figure that one out. Um, so yes, yeah, so this should be our handler, and in there it should just be enough to do this. I think. It may be the case that we don't want to do this every every time. Let's do this. Uh, does it just work if I just make a... You know what we can do is we can just not... We can just remove the handler again. <laughs> That'll work. That should work. So if we get this interrupt at all, it'll do this. Dark second, shouldn't you enable the screen? Um, yes. Yeah, you're right. I should do that. I don't want to enable it until the interrupt fires, but then I do want to enable it. That that That's absolutely correct. That is That is what I want. Um, okay, so, yeah, the display control, yes. Exactly. So we're going to do, this This should be enough. We'll set up the drawing, we'll set up this, we'll set up the background color, and that should be, that should be everything we need to do to get this rolling. Um, I think, we also need to enable the interrupt. Uh, Agnes Holder, um, or Angus Holder. Uh, so not in this case. Uh, I looked at the uh, startup code here uh, with the way it bootstraps it, and basically no, because it it will, uh, um, yeah, basically store all the registers, uh, pick out which interrupt it was uh, to get the actual handler of the thing, uh, compare the handler against zero. If it is zero, then it just goes and restores all the registers. Otherwise, it will um, uh, here jump and link through this jump here. 
so that when the function returns, it actually returns to here or here rather, and then it'll just go through the epilogue. So it actually, the, the function itself doesn't need to be special because of the bootstrapping here. Um, we should be good there. Uh, we do, of course, need to enable the interrupt. And I think, I'm guessing that's going to be in here. Maybe not, though. VIP.h is probably in there. Here we go. Defines for the interrupt enable. So if I remember correctly, it's frame start that we're waiting for. This is the one we want, I think. So I think what we do um, is that that interrupt enable? Actually, can't I do this? Oops, that was not what I wanted, I wanted to get the, this. Oops. There, frame start. And then I would need to enable the interrupts, but I actually think that they are enabled already. What did this thing do for the system for the timer? Okay. Yeah. So here it goes. Enables the interrupt here and sets the interrupt level as well. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that as well. And this will only set it up the first time it looks like, because it'll just reset the vector here. Could also just uh, disable the interrupts, actually. I kind of like that more. Whoops, that's timer int. That's not what we wanted. Uh, is there a VIP int or something for this? Or I guess this is uh, here, maybe? Not really certain where this stuff was defined here. Yeah, because it's called this timer function here. Oh, yeah, but that's timer control. Actually, I think because we already set up in the VIP, we're good there. I think, I think that's actually all we needed. And then we're probably fine. And then again, I'll just do set this to zero again. I think all this makes sense. So in Manafin, we get a pink screen. This is actually what I expect not to happen on the hardware. But if it does, so Russia Boy is, is black like we expected. Uh, and then if I flash this onto the hardware, I expect also the screen will be black. And if it's not, then there's something very interesting going on. And then I suspect if that's what happens, then we've actually been able to isolate a small enough test case rather than reverse engineering all the code. So I think that'll be okay. Uh, but we need to find out if, uh, if this works now. Uh, it looks like it didn't connect here. There it goes. That USB port's a little shoddy. So yeah, so in, in Mandafin, it seems like it just, it sets up some of the video hardware state, but like not a lot of it. Um, and that it will then wait for that particular interrupt, this one. And it ends up firing without the screen having been enabled, is my understanding. Unless we've missed something, but if this works on the hardware, then we've got something interesting. 
but this is this is kind of the exciting moment that I this is like the one thing that I wanted to do today <laughs> is this one test. So Mach 83 trying to come up with a test ROM to see if the display is enabled when the scanner stabilized. Yes, uh, I did also suspect that. So that's that's definitely. Um, I think this will actually still work in that case. I think this will be sufficient to test. Like if that's the case, I think this will still become red on the hardware. And so that's definitely one of the things that I would want to try next is uh, see if that's why. Because um, I really don't know. <laughs> Because it could it could be something weird like that I I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. Elite Garbers Man, yeah, I guess I don't have the uptime thing set up. Uh, but I start at eight p.m. Uh, CEST. So been up for about an hour and a half now. I'm my own bot. Uh. Okay, it's red. Why? <laughs> uh. Okay, so first of all, this is actually really good um, that this turned red here because this means that we probably don't have to reverse engineer the startup routine for this game any further because it looks like we've isolated the test case and i'm very happy about that because i was really hoping that this could be our short path and it looks like it was so go intuition um <laughs> however that should not have happened based on my understanding of the hardware which is naturally why it fails in the emulator um so next is to find out why <laughs> and to be honest i think just because it's starting to get late i think i'm going to do a cliffhanger ending here and I think we're going to look at this next week. <laughs> so. Dark Second says Menafin was correct all along. No. I actually know that that's not the case. Because I know that at least this, the, the display enabled register state. That is definitely disabled on startup. Uh, and and I, like, I, can, I can isolate that as well. Just to be sure actually. Uh, I can set up everything but the display control. Oh, no, I did that earlier, uh, where I said everything except the display control, and then we got black on the hardware, which is what we would expect. So. Yep, so Mendafin's still wrong, and Rustful Boy's wrong, and we're going to find out why. <laughs> but right now, going to do one of these cliffhanger endings, <laughs> and we're going to figure that out next week. I, I will say this, though. If, if I end up not being able to control myself... And wanting to look into this more, I will stream it uh, in the coming week. But I, I probably won't. I'll probably be doing this next week. But I'm actually very happy with that result um, because that's kind of what I was hoping was the case so that we wouldn't have to dig deeper into the startup routine. Something weird is happening here, and we just got to figure out what it is. But when we do, then this game should be fixed, and that's that's really exciting. So I'm I'm happy with that. So Mac 83 progress always good exactly. Just the fact that we know that this is different that's uh that's what we wanted to find out. So I'm very I'm very pleased. Dark second see you Sunday yeah. By the way um I've been saying this at the end of most of my streams now uh just just to make sure people are aware. I'm back on my normal normal streaming schedule so every uh <laughs> back on my normal screaming schedule yes I have scheduled screaming. Uh so <laughs> on Thursdays uh doing this emulator stream. Uh, back to normal. 8 p.m. CET slash CEST, depending on the time of year. Uh, and then Sunday's doing the demo scene stream where I'm just making stuff. So should be fun. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, this is really fun. And we will uh, find out why this is the case next week, I hope. <laughs> so yeah, see you guys later.